A crowd of mourners lit torches and intoned a military chant to honor a Ukrainian medic and a soldier who fell in love while on the front lines of the war and died together in a Russian shelling attack. The funeral took place Friday at Kiev's crematorium, a cavernous and grimly modern building often used for funerals of the war dead. Valentina Nahorna, whose call sign was Valkyria, volunteered as a medic at the start of the war. She and Daniil Lyashkevich, known as Berserk, fell in love just a few months ago, their friends and comrades said, but it helped them endure the war. They both worked in the 3rd Assault Brigade, and were killed November 4. Those gathered gave the chant that Ukrainian soldiers learn by heart when they first start training, burn with fire, life-giving, the weakness in my heart. Let me know no fear, nor doubt. Kostil, who like many Ukrainian soldiers agreed to be identified only by his call sign, said meeting Valkyrie helped Berserk emerge from a dark time in his life. He finally had a soulmate who also wanted to fight with him and be as close to the war as possible but this was their last time together, and no one is safe from that," Kostel said. Dvyachnik, a 3rd Brigade soldier who knew the medic better than her soldier companion, described her as fearless and willing to learn anything. She was very genuine, regardless of who was talking to her, whether it was a colonel or a company commander, he said. She was very sincere and real with everyone and I will miss her very much. Она, она была дуже справжня, незалежно від того, хто з нею говорить, чи це якийсь буде полковник, чи це якийсь буде ротний, вона з усіма дуже щира і справжня. І... Мені буде дуже не вистачати. А ще вона завжди з таким, була з неймовірною долею авантюризму, з криками. Я це не вмію, але я десь за добу цього навчусь. А цього буде дуже бракувати. У нього нарешті з'явилась там друга половинка, яка з ним разом також хоче воювати і знаходитись якомога ближче до війни. Але це і стало їхнім останнім виходом разом.
The group of 10,000 North Korean soldiers that Kim Jong-un provided to the Kremlin will most likely not be used in the war against Ukraine. The Kremlin needs it for its own security. This opinion was expressed in Telegram Russian blogger Anatoly Nesmian. He believes that large-scale participation of North Koreans at the front should not be expected. With their help, the Russian dictator will try to keep the situation inside the country under his control. Prigozhin's mutiny clearly showed that the loyalty to Putin's regime of the military and its own punitive structures is zero. With a military conflict, an army that is decomposing before our eyes, flooded with criminals, a tired population, including mutinies, is the height of stupidity. We need a force that can stop such a union. Russian blogger wrote, it is the DPRK soldiers who can become such a force. Another important condition is the minimal risk that such a force will collude with the rebels. In addition, according to the blogger, North Korean troops would be perfect for executing the rebellious population of Russia. In the Russian Federation, the punishment for military mutiny has already been increased to life imprisonment. However, this is not enough to ensure the regime's security. The DPRK troops will essentially become the force accompaniment of the law. When Russian paramilitary chief Yevgeny Prigozhin sent his Wagner mercenaries charging towards Moscow last year in a short-lived rebellion, President Vladimir Putin looked weak and vulnerable. But just one year on, from the most serious challenge to his authority in almost a quarter of a century in power, the Kremlin leader now appears more secure than ever. Prigozhin was killed in an airplane crash two months after the mutiny in which his Wagner fighters seized Russia's army headquarters in the southern city of Rostov-on-Don, shot down military aircraft and marched halfway to the capital before Belarus mediated a deal to end the 24-hour uprising. At present, there was no widespread defiance or public outpouring of support for Putin. Both the popular and elite response to the uprising showed there was little authentic enthusiasm for Putin or the war.